Kia ora guys and welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name is Max, I'm the host over here at this channel and I am on holiday right now but there is a bit of breaking news that I'm going to present to you guys. Eddie Jones, he is going to be the head coach of Japan. I've stated my case about the scenario before. I've said basically, you know, Eddie has had a really, really good career. He has achieved so much. He won the most trophies out of any England coach in history. He is the last Australian coach to win the Bledisloe Cup. He's won pretty much every major trophy he's been eligible for, you know, apart from the World Cup as a head coach. But I have said it's probably time for him to give it up as he is looking like a guy who's starting to run out of ideas. Before I kind of discuss the whole thing, though, I do want to say a massive thank you to my patrons. You guys, you've been awesome throughout all of 2023. And, well... It's been a bit of a roller coaster year, so the thanks is always going to be given to you guys. It's been especially more of a roller coaster, though, for the Aussies, because overall, even though Eddie's probably not going to repeat the same tricks with Japan that he did last time, I do think this is a really bad indictment of the state of Australian rugby. For a wee while, I started to think maybe Hamish McLennan is finally going to be the chairman that's going to sort everything out. He secured the rights for the 2027 Rugby World Cup. The 2025 Lions tour is just two years before that, so I'm now saving my money to go and watch a few of the games on that tour. And just as I started to think, maybe they were finally turning the corner at the last chance they had to do it. Things just kept getting worse. Dave Rennie never taught his Wallabies how to stop being chokers. He never taught them to control their discipline, and he quite simply had to go. But replacing with Eddie Jones, look, I understand what they were trying to do. Wayne Smith, Michael Checker with Argentina. Um, there's been a long track record of very experienced coaches taking over teams during a World Cup cycle rather than the start of one so that they can kind of, I guess, use their coaching experience to help out a young team and get them to save their country, I guess. Warren Gatland, probably the most classic example from 2023. He massively, massively turns the Welsh around. I've said this so many times on this channel, but Eddie Jones, he was simply just given a far worse hand than Gatland. And well, those Aussie players just simply weren't good enough. Eddie Jones is like, right, okay, I'm going to see what I can do with the guys that I've inherited from Dave Rennie. I'm going to see what I can achieve with them. He named James Slipper and Michael Hooper as the co-captains. And well, simply put, I agree with the fact that he didn't think that Hooper, Fault and Quade Cooper were good role models for the team. You know, that quote about being obsessed with winning, if Bernard Foley was obsessed with winning, he wouldn't have wasted all that time that cost the Bledisloe in 2022. Quade Cooper, he didn't return back from injury the same player. And Michael Hooper is one of the most penalised players of all time, and he's the most yellow-carded rugby player in, well, the men's test history. They weren't good for the team, having them in the environment. He was right to turn to the next generation, because we've seen it done so many times before. I mean, Simon Rywa-Louis, we could probably even argue the case that he did that with Fiji, in 2023, when you see the Black Ferns, you see the Welsh, you see the Argentinians, um, you see the 2015 Aussies, you see the South Africans under Razzie Erasmus. There are so many examples of experienced coaches coming in and saving a team from utter annihilation because, simply put, South Africa weren't good under Alistair Kotzia. But back to Eddie Jones, he tried that. He tried to do what the other guys were doing but there was no solution. So he was like, right, I'm going to turn to the next generation. And those guys, they they weren't good enough. He tried to get them to research the opposition. Their minds just, they couldn't comprehend everything because they'd never researched their opposition in their, their entire life. They'd never been, you know, exposed to any serious analysis. And Rugby Australia has really failed any coach that's going to take over Eddie Jones in this way. With Japan, yeah, they're probably going to have a bit of a, um, a stagnant time under Eddie Jones as he's getting to the end of his career. He's starting to pass the baton over to the next generation of coaches, the Gen Xs, who are a bit softer on the players, I guess. But overall, I think that Eddie Jones, some of his traits with being really strict, really um, 
a real workaholic, I guess. He tries to teach that behavior to the players to be a workaholic. Because Japan is a place of respect, a place where you're allowed to get called out for doing just the tiniest little things wrong, I think that won't be as bad of a um, influence on the Japanese. Maybe off the field it could be good for them, but just not on the field. Who knows about that? But overall, I think the situation with Eddie Jones joining Japan, it says more about Australia than it, it does about him because he gave it a go. And let's remember when he was in charge of England. Come on, guys. They only beat Eddie Jones a single time out of 13 test matches. He beat them 12 out of the 13 times that he faced them as the head coach of the English. Rugby Australia, uh, still with Phil Ward, their CEO, he's still trying to talk about speeding the game up. Even though the All Blacks lost the World Cup final because Super Rugby stands are, they tried to alter the laws of rugby union to suit them. It didn't work. They tried to do that, and we paid the price with Sam Kane deservingly getting that red card. And yet Rugby Australia are still insisting that the game needs to be faster. No. Yes, more ball and play time would be good. That would be excellent. But the thing is, guys, that with more ball and play, there can be more injuries. So not all of that ball and play time has to be expansive rugby. I would rather the game stay at its current pace so that the referees can get all of their decisions correct. Because what do we as fans want? We want to see the right decisions made from the officials so we can get a clear and concise winner of a match. This is regardless of whether it's you know, Super Rugby, NPC, the English Premiership, the Japanese Top League. We just want to see a clear winner determined on the day so that the winning team's fans can have a big old celebration and losing team's fans can go to bed and have a bit of a cry. That's what we as fans, we want to see. Rugby Australia have learned nothing. They're not going to teach the players to improve their discipline. They're going to keep trying to play a bad imitation of league except with flankers, with rucks, and with a set piece. Super rugby is not rugby as far as I'm concerned. As I said, it's a poor imitation of rugby league, but because you have two flankers, you can have the scrum with pushing, you can have the lineouts, of course, and you can have actually contesting for the ball, you know, when you're trying to jackal, trying to win the turnover, as those who know rugby know very well. Seriously. If Rugby Australia are still behaving like this, with Phil War making these statements post-2023 Rugby World Cup, where discipline that has been encouraged to be bad by the Super Rugby laws got exposed. Super Rugby, by default, it allows players to get away with having worse discipline because of the 20-minute red card. That's just how it is. I'm not making things up. The 20-minute card for the English fans who don't miss Eddie... That is a thing that happens in Super Rugby. You get sent off for 20 minutes, then you can be replaced, though you're not allowed back on the field. Rugby Australia have not learned a darn thing. Eddie Jones has obviously seen this as a problem, and he's jumped ship. Look, was it right for Eddie Jones to do this after signing a five-year contract? Probably not. If I was Eddie Jones, I probably should have just, from the start tried to get a shorter contract if Eddie Jones was probably a bit more talkative about this thing he probably should have like said hey look just give me a one-year contract I want to see what I can do because this way he wouldn't have had to go through the effort of resigning and everything it's probably not ideal that he's not committing to the full length of his contract but overall I don't know man is the fact that he hasn't hasn't been sacked good for Rugby Australia? You know, I would rather just, if Rugby Australia aren't ever going to come back, as I don't think they ever go are going to be, it would just be so much better to just put them out of their misery. You see them, they're going to the schools, they're trying to get kids to learn the game, but it's all well and good to get them to learn the game. They need to actually fall in love with the game. Winning is what gets the kids to fall in love with the game. You need Super Rugby to just stop trying to be this bad imitation of league. If Union tries to imitate league, it's never going to be able to do that better. Union is a strategy game. It is a game where every player on the pitch is a piece on a chessboard, 
enacting exactly what a smart, intelligent, genius head coach has devised on their iPad or on their computer with their animations. That's what rugby union is. League, on the other hand, is a fast-paced game where not much strategy comes into the equation. It's all about instinct and whoever can thrive off their instinct best in sync with one another, they're the team who gets the victories. Rugby Australia will never be able to do that better than what the NRL has already got going. They are stuck in their ways and, simply put, if I was Eddie Jones, I'd have done the same thing. Japan, though, I don't think they're going to get some good results. I do think Japan already have, you know, a bit of a situation with a young team like Australia. The youngsters coming through Japan, apart from Warner Dunes, haven't exactly been crazy good. Amato Fakatava, one of the best players in the world, he's still there. Kazuki Himeno is an awesome captain, but Kotaro Matsushima is getting on. The 9-10 combination is starting to get on. The props are starting to get on, so they're facing a bit of a rebuild as well, and is Eddie Jones going to be able to connect with these young Japanese players? I'm not sure, because... He was doing so well with England. He did really well with the Wallabies up until he got, um, you know, all his injuries back in 2005. But when he came back to Australia, he just didn't seem to be able to connect with the Gen Z players anymore. And rugby is a young man's game. The young guys are going to keep coming through and it is going to start, I think, continuing to lose that connection with my generation. And so Japan, probably not the best buy they could have got, but overall, this says more about Australia than it does about Eddie Jones. Rugby Australia, the Wallabies, they're a tier two nation now. And I don't think there's going to be any way out for them. Eddie Jones with Japan, probably not going to be able to beat them. But you know what? This is a whole lot better for Eddie to finish off his career than with the state of Super Rugby not sorting out the discipline of the players. Bit more of a rant video, I guess, there, guys. Um, just a few random thoughts that I had after Eddie signed this contract, made it official. But yeah, let me know what you think of Eddie Jones making this move down below. Was it a good move? Was it a bad move? Probably somewhere more towards the negative side, but I'll see what you guys have to say. Thank you very much for watching the video, guys. One more time, a huge thanks to my patrons. Really appreciate you guys for liking this video and subscribing as well. You can also check me out over on Instagram. And if this happens to be my last video before Christmas Day, well then, Merry Christmas. See you later, guys.